gender. dog size. So you can see maybe Chihuahua are going to be XS. And then my dog is Corgi, so it could be the medium. And then like a double do, a double do, like, yeah, like a little reverse, it's going to be like large or XS. Does the user have to enter one of those values or can they enter anything? Yeah, is that a drop down or is that? Oh, yes, drop down. Yes, drop down. It is a drop down. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then uh, instead of the history, I just put the first date of visit, so we don't have to like uh, renew, like uh, mm, like uh, put the data all the time. Mm -hmm. So we can see like how like good customer we are. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then. Uh, that's it for the customer's table. And the next one is also the static table is the salon. Let's go to design. Okay. And then for the key field, it's a staff ID. So staff means like uh, people do the trimming or shampoo or whatever they do. And then uh, it's also all the numbers I would change to the numbers. But somehow I stuck here because I when I try to change to the, the, the number, and it shows like I mess up with the relationship that I need to change for. Well, me. now you see you you trying to do this change too late. Yeah. You've already established your relationships, mm -hmm. so I'm afraid that that's a closed door for you now. What you have to do is delete your relationships, then you mm -hmm. can change it and reestablish your relationships. Oh, and in okay. some cases, you might even have to delete some data and reestablish it. So you want to try to think everything out ahead of time as much as possible to avoid these mm -hmm. moments. Okay. Yeah. So do I need like a delete the relationship first? I'll show you how to delete relationships. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. And then uh, the next the name of the staff, and then next is speciality. So let's see, speciality, yes. Yes, uh, I have the like a drop down staff, trim, shampoo, nail clipping, or blowing or flushing. So that's all the category of the speciality. Okay. And then uh, next is the experience. And then I just put the like a trainee, beginner, experience, and master. So it's also the drop down. Oh, yeah, no, drop down. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I love that. So <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's all for the doc salon. And then I have the uh, what, uh, dynamic table, the visit. And then, so I have the key field, three key field is customer ID, staff ID, and this they don't visit. Right. And then, okay, so. Uh, did you want, can they have two visits the same day? Uh, oh, I so didn't think of that. Then you what? want time to also be a key. Oh, so what okay. we need to do is delete those three keys and make all four fields a key. So highlight those three fields mm -hmm. that are keys, highlight them. Yeah, all three, uh, I like. Okay. And the left margin. Yeah, I like one, two, three. Okay, now, where's your key? Click on your key. Yes. Here. Oh, okay. They're gone. Now, I like four fields. And now click on key again. Huh? Huh? What happened? Just say Control-Z. I stood near it. Control-Z. Control-Z? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's magic. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it again. 
scary stuff. Mm -hmm. just, just go back to the top and read it. Yeah. Go back? Just right 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 here and drag down. And drag down to four. Okay, no, no, oh, no. no. <laughs> Control Z. <laughs> okay, now just uh, click, click, once. Click, click down here on just feedback. Good. Okay, now, now click on yeah. customer ID and drag down to four fields. Yeah. Stop. Oh. <laughs> okay, now that's how we change key sizes. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. anything about these relationships. <laughs> yeah, it's so There's a million of them. <laughs> Is it too many? Yeah, and yeah, it's a weird spot. Okay, um, now let's let's remind ourselves what we are using relationships for. The reason we're using relationships, so let, let go of the mouse so that we don't conflict, is that you might want to print a report of all of the visits. So this is your primary table for that report. But instead of on that report printing customer ID, you might want to print the name and gender of the dog. So that means you have to use this link to go back to this table and pick up those items. You also might want to print the staff member that worked on them. So you have to go to this table. So what these relationships give you is that they link these three tables into one giant table. So remember we started we're talking about databases by having one giant table and we said it had deficiencies like data redundancy. So we go to these many small tables and you criticize it that you can't print as big a report as you could with a single big file. Not true, because whenever you want to print a report, you can link these tables together and you can get information from any of the tables if you have a path. And these links give you a path to the other table to pick up fields for your report. So uh, your links should consist of um, those fields that are going to contain the same value in each. Now here you have customer ID, and you're going to use this to jump to this table and pick up information. Here you have staff ID, and you're going to use this to jump to this table and pick up this information. But none of the other fields are linked to any of the other tables, only this one and this one. So what you need to do is to remove those links. In the, fact, can we delete the whole thing? The data, okay. data first visit, is that going in your, in your uh, middle one as well? Well, the, uh, that's, just, that's just a fixed field. That's static. No, the first visit date, like your first girlfriend, is never going to change again. Okay. And so that goes right there. Okay. Now, so these other three and these other three have to come. So one way to do it is uh, one at a time, or we could delete the whole thing and start over. Let me try and see if we can delete one at a time. I'll take the seat here. So what I'm going to do is right click, right click on one of these links and click on delete. 
I think I'll leave the whole thing if I can. I done tried it. We're going to have to do a clear layout. Hi, right, go leave. You have to click to refresh all Yeah, the on the, like, oh, exact the pixel. Line. Yeah, like, like the single oh pixel. Oh, my <laughs> Like a whole new life, right? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. no. <laughs> yeah, so it took me about 30 minutes to do it. I can't do it on this one. I've lost it. Too but high. I can do it. I believe in you. It, This is going to, you start in the one and you go to the mini. So do I start here or do I start in the left? remind ourselves the purpose of these key fields is uniqification. Yeah, Each record right. in this field must be able to be accessed if wanted, individually. That's the word. So that means that there must be a field or sequence of fields in each record in this table that is identifiably different from all the other records in that table. Now if you just have ID of customer and staff, there will be many such records. So you can't find a particular record that you're looking for. If you just have date of visit, there might be two visits in the same day. So you need to have enough key fields so that each record can be uniquely identified and accessed. But they don't have to be linked to anything else, but they have to be there uh, for the purpose of keys, is to make each record unique. Okay. So now this is in good shape. Now, um, I don't really see your reports. Oh. I don't. Forms. They're forms. 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 I don't see them. I don't see them. <laughs> I don't see your forms and papers. C minus. Okay. So you're, you're behind the curve, and you're going to have to pick it up a little. Now, if she had wanted to change from auto number to number, um, then she might have to come here and delete these links again. Right. So you might be doing coming here and deleting links many times. So once again, to delete a link, you just right click on it and choose delete. Just. Just. <laughs> oh, oh, it's not <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so. Okay, so good. Okay, yeah. next. Who 
wants to go next? I think Jordan does. <laughs> so if you drag from the visit to say the dog side, it would be one to one. Does that make sense? Um, or it doesn't matter. You get to um, let's see. We I'd have to look at the box again. You might be able to choose one to one in the box of choices as opposed to one to many. Mm -hmm. But as Jeff pointed out, if you actually have a one to one relationship. Uh, they should not be table. separate tables, they should be in the same table. I would just make sure, like you say, if I did that, make sure I'm not. Okay, we'll experiment. Doing the wrong thing now. Right. Can you see okay? Okay. Your so, project, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, before I get started, uh, a little mm -hmm. introduction the Uniform Issue Inventory Masters, my database. What I hope to get out of this database is to find out which cadets have been issued which uniform items. So I built three tables here. My tables are here, cadet issued and uniform inventory. And I'll show you later. And here's my form that I created. Cadet form, issue form, and uniform inventory form. Report you on the next Wednesday. Wednesday. Cut it, cut it. <laughs> on Wednesday. Uh, so let's take a look at Design view, you can see I have a cadet ID number, uh, last name, first name, birthday, gender, and also uh, Air Force JROTC class, which class they're in. Um, Can I ask a couple questions? Sure. Um, why is your ID a text field? Numbers uh, produce fewer errors. That's a mistake. Uh, That's a mistake, and I'll change that. No, <coughs> it's your it's your, it's your database. It's your database. Yeah, I understand, but it, it is a number. I have a number in there for it. Do they have an output in the number? Perhaps. No, it doesn't. Well, you know, text works fine, but the numeric has some more oomph to it. All right. And um, now this class doesn't that change year to year? Do the uniforms change from year to year? The uniform remains the same. And they don't want class. In the, in the class, well, this is for one school year. So for that one school year, they will remain in that one class. And then do they have a new issue of uniform? Yes. The next year? Next year. Okay. Oh, so they do. do they give the old this uniform back? I'm just yes, curious. they do. Ah, they return the uniform back. So here, and you see I've added some names. And here, I've used a drop-down box. No. Oh, click on the field. You'll see it. You'll see it. Right, right, it's like right. Actual, uh, right there. Here we go. So here, uh, listed uh, oh. the genders: female, male, and other. Or both. <laughs> or both. <laughs> here, I did uh, the w wizard to put the drop down for each class: first year, second year, third year, fourth year. And there's even a checkbox. Oh. There's even a checkbox. Advanced. Uh, also use the calendar for the date. And that is any for questions days. about the cadet? Checking? I think everyone should use calendars for dates. I don't know how. <laughs> Michael tell you. Okay, that's nice. Okay. Issue. Let's go to the other master first. That's a little easier to understand the issue. Oh, the, this yeah. one? Yeah. Yeah. Inventory, which I need to change that again. That should be a number instead of text for the ID number. I need to change that. Uh, item name, female. And I only went to, uh, just for this project for the we're doing now, I went with female and male short sleeve shirts. And then I have the sizes for those shirts. And it looks like this. Yeah. Next like, size. In real life? Next size, yeah. Four. Oh, next size. Next yeah. size. Well, it's Four? shirt size. 
Okay, I'm with you. Four or fourteen. Yeah, I got some. I got, I got some two. Technical question. Uh, didn't fill in this one yet, but the table's built. Uh, yeah. Okay, now what's going to be his key field? Somebody tell him. Right now I have issue as my key field. Yeah. Issue. Issue. Yeah. Yeah. Issue. What is issue? Issue. Mm -hmm. What's going to be typed in as a possible entry? Yes, you know. yeah. up. What's going to be a possible entry for issue? Mm -hmm. The item number here. The item number yeah. is the um the item number is the key field in your third table? It will be, yes, yes. Okay. Now, who is going to be receiving this item? One of your persons, you agree? Yes. So, an issue is one item going to one person. Yes. So, what would be the logical key fields? Oh, so I need a key field for the cadet yes. ID the in there also. Cadet ID? Yes, mm -hmm. I need the cadet ID. Right. Right. The cadet ID, I need in there, and also the issue item ID. Right. Item. And would those two together both be the key? Yes. Yes, item. And then, what would be some secondary fields in this composite table? Secondary fields, I could go with uh, item name? Or no, that's in the other one. That you, can, you can link to that. Yeah. It's already in the other table. That's the beauty mm -hmm. of relational databases. Once you have the item number, you can link to the item table and pick up anything you want there, so you don't have to redundantly put it here. Straighten them out. Yeah. Top left is a view button. Yeah, just click the button itself. <laughs> no, the, no, the, the drop down. Where it says view. There you go. Let's see which one. Bam. Well, no. We'll go over to the see if that drop down is correct. Yeah, this is like new in here, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 that's just format. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll try to help. Close the view. Yeah, <laughs> then form view. Form view. Okay. Now I'll click right here. Right here. Okay, click there. Right there. There you go. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> you got a magic that is? <laughs> so let's keep.
to him to my hair is gone. You hear? I think you gotta close your table for me. Yeah. Now this is where you tweak close your Close my table. Yeah, that's all that stuff. Right click, close. Close all. Yeah, you could close all. Stay quicker. Oh no. Oh, turn you on. Or not. <laughs> They're contributing, dude. Right. Here's my uh, form for uh, issue. And here's the form for the inventory of the uniform. Nice work. And that's the Can right. I see your relationships? Ah, relationships. The database tools? Yeah. I mean, just the one you want to show me. So we're definitely improving our abilities. 
and also gaining respect for people that do this for a living. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, programming is, is always in the top ten stress careers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Sir. I feel much better now. Okay, do you need to up? Much better. We move you along. So mine was uh, has locations, uh, locations of where the air, aircraft park, and then equipment, and then my uh, dynamic table is the delivery and where those items are. So the equipment field number is uh, it's got. Letters and numbers in there, that's why it's just text. Okay. <coughs> I'll just, okay, I'm with you. And then I also have the equipment type, whether it's a generator, air compressor, or something like that. The status, whether it's serviceable or not. And then the color. You just type all that in? Yes. Okay. Uh, I was kind of debating on doing drop downs or not, but there's a lot of, it kind of depends on how much information I want to put in there, how many different types of equipment and stuff. So. Yeah, a lot of drop-down lists are sometimes a cover for incomplete structure. <laughs> but the color, there's really only green or gray, so that one could be a, a drop-down. What does the color mean? Hmm? What does the color mean? That it hasn't been painted the correct color yet. Um, <laughs> so if it's gray, then it's bad? Or no, gray is good. Green, so gray is good. Green means it's an older piece that hasn't been painted in a while. Um, so. <laughs> All right, and then uh, for the locations, I also consider under location doing a drop down because there's only so many spots out there. Right. Um, and then whether it's in use or not, and I thought about maybe putting an uh, aircraft type. That could use the location. Correct. Mm -hmm. And then adding different locations where other aircrafts would park to mm -hmm. that would also fit under the, lo the has locations. but. Uh, Right. Any anywhere on that side of the runway is just going to be F-16s, but okay. <clears throat> and then for delivery, we got equipment and has location, and then the delivery date and time. So you'll never take the same item out there on another day. take one, one specific piece of equipment to the same specific location on a different date. So then you were going to have records with the same keys. Because your key is too short. So delivery date and time need to be a key. Well, can you take the same item to the same site twice a day? Yes. Then you need to do just what Ayana did. You need to set up a separate field for date, separate field for time, Okay. And make all four of them. You can do that tonight. Make all four of them your key. That's what you do this. So, so once again, the, the question you ask you about your key fields is does it separate one record in the table from all other records? Is there any other record in the table that can have the same keys? If so, you have to extend the key until okay. that's no longer true. So there doesn't have to be necessarily another piece of data in here that's not a key. No, there doesn't have to be, but usually you can find something uh, to, um, uh, that's, that's necessary, like who delivered it. Okay. Because yeah. that's not static, who delivers it, right? 
So they could yeah, anything that's a property of that delivery, how was it delivered? Forklift. Couldn't you just take the time out and so that the that one piece of equipment will be out there on that certain date? So say well, like he's indicated that it could come back and yeah. go out again mm -hmm. the same day. Yes. So this, this is what you do before you, this is called the analysis and design phase uh, of the program, and it's done before coding, before coding, before coding, before coding. Um, well, let's do it later, because we don't have a clock problem. Yeah, we'll just point out things to the right. We'll see your program again. So now your forms are fine. What yeah. will you do? <laughs> okay, talking about uh, my relationships. My relationships, I did. Tell me about your relationships. Have, uh, There's nothing wrong there. No, it's good. <laughs> yeah. That's good. No it redundancy. You're good. <laughs> well, I don't see a key no. field on the has. Right, um, yeah. I was trying to move this one over here, and it was giving me an error message. Because it's not a key no field. Key, yeah. No key field. And maybe it's a different data type, too. Referential integrity because you're trying to deliver some data to a location that you haven't integrated. So let's go to your let's go to your second table. Your equipment. Now your delivery your delivery table. Okay, let's go to data sheet. Okay. Um, do you have no data in here? There's nothing. No. I didn't put anything in yet because it kept giving me that error message. Let's go design view in here. Let's see what your text text. Um, okay, well, uh, what you want to do is take out the data in any other table. You got some data in um, as location? Let's see. No. You got some data in um, equipment? No. You have no data anywhere? Mm. Uh, unless, would my, would yeah, my go, go to the data sheet view. Yeah. Go to the data sheet view on this. View down below. The, yeah, there you go. Data sheet view. Nothing. Go to data sheet view on equipment. This is equipment. Go to data sheet view on, on location. No data anywhere? No. Then the relationship should be establishable. Okay. Go back so we can see the. Yeah, do so that try again. to drag it again from here to here. And. Um, Um, because it is already in, oh, in use by, you got to close the other fields. So close, close, close all. Close, close all. Okay, start relationships. Okay. Oh, Tools, database nice. tools. There you go. Okay, now try to drag it. Oh, that's the window. There. Data in the there, there may be records to an employee in the related tables, but no record in the primary table. Uh, it's telling you you've got some data. So um, Maybe uh, the what you might have to do is delete one of your tables. Delete one of your delivery, tables. Delivery table? Delete it and, re, okay. and redesign it. Okay. Yeah. Because we did change the key on that. Okay, so this is making progress too, and we still need some more work on it, like reports. Okay, ma'am, you're next. Okay. So, some good problems solved. So, who else is wants to show tonight? We got to judge at one time. Georgie? I could, but I'll have to get on my email to get it. So, if anybody else has it already, like accessible, 
Oh, you're ready to go, Joe? You can load it on this real quick. Mm -hmm. Just don't put it in. I don't know. He's don't don't put it in the door on here. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll try to get two Thanks, more. Thanks, buddy. Here. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Oh, no, my computer has viruses. Okay, there you go. By the way, work with each other outside of class. At least for moral support. Oh, look at this. She's got reports. Um, oh, look at her. Oh, jeez. Her husband probably did for her. Okay, let's go. Oh, yeah, that's great. Okay, let, let's remind us your project. Hold on. I'm sorry? Let's remind us what your project is. Oh, say it. Okay, so... <laughs> I'm doing my uh, project on Pizza Place Database. Uh, pizza Place Database. Um, it's a pizza place, and uh, I got the customer table. So here, you can see, open it. Uh, I'll go here, something like that. So I got customer ID, auto number, uh, one, two, three, four, five, et cetera. First name, last name, phone okay. number. Okay, what I'm going to do is speed up our delivery. We'll try to get each one done in six minutes. Right. Okay, we know these things. Okay, so I added some fields. My whole family, these are all my animals. This is my husband. So uh, I gave them phone numbers. This is their address, Cat Tree, Dog Park, Turtle Farm, okay. et cetera. Okay, so next we go. Pizza orders, so uh, actually I want to do pizza, pizza table. table. Yeah, pizza table, because this is my static table. So I got all these kinds of pizzas, right? So uh, all right. you read can't really see point. it, but I got the pizza ID. Actually, okay. let me read you the view. So I got pizza ID, the pizza name, the description of the pizza, so that people know what they're getting, uh, the pizza price and currency, uh, and then the prep time for how long it takes to make. So Great. it looks like this. Okay. Yep. So moving Great. on. Moving on. Pizza orders. I got uh, meal order. I did four, four IDs, right? So I got my. Uh, let's show you. So I got my meal order ID, just like kind of a receipt number. Um, like if you bought something, you can reference back to it. Like if you ordered like a pizza online. Uh, the customer ID, so stop, when you log stop, in. Okay. Um, because we don't need this many keys. Okay, so which okay, ones do you need? hand off the mouse so I don't get cut out. <laughs> now, um, if you have a meal order ID, it, is, every, um, is every order going to have a meal order ID or only some of them? Every single one. It will have a meal order ID. Right. Um, then you don't need any other um, then, then you don't need any other key field. I yeah. just don't need the key. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, your customer ID can still be linked to the customer ID, but it's not needed as a key field. This is over key. <laughs> because uh, that one first field is sufficient to you can uniquify each record. Agree? No duplicates. No duplicates will ever come off of that. Agree? If I have a meal ID. Yeah. And I can have that in my composite field, correct? Um, yeah, you can have it in your composite field. It doesn't teach you the real use of a composite table, but if this is the way you run your business, uh, then this is the way you run your business. And um, um, the, what these other fields are, so what you want to do is highlight these four fields in design view and click on key. And now just click on meal order number. I like that one. Now click on key. Now you only need that one key. Now open the mouse so I don't get short circuit. Now this is what's known as a foreign key. This is a field that is a key field in some other table. So here it's called a foreign key. This is a foreign key and so is that. Agree? So you can point on your relationships just like it, as if it was a key, but it's not needed to be a key. So you can still use it from the other tables, but it's not a key field. Yes. So if I deleted meal, because I only made that because you brought up the point when I was uh, pitching my idea that what if somebody ordered like two pizzas, like two different kinds of pizzas, then I thought besides date time, which I still made a key field, uh, I thought that would alleviate that issue because you can have multiple customers order different pizzas with 
the same like the same information but different right. entries. Right now, if you deleted that field, you would have to enter another entry record into this composite field for each pizza they ordered. Mm -hmm. And if one customer orders five or six pizzas, then um, then um, then uh, you're going to have to fill out six entries. But you have a contradiction here anyway, because this pizza ID, suppose I order two or three pizzas. Then this is going to be a many-to-many -many relationship, which has to be resolved down into one-to-many. So um, what you have to do is just have a um, crude, cumbersome design where for every pizza, is this what's called now a line item order. In other words, uh, when somebody orders something, you have an order invoice, agree? Correct. But the invoice has lines. And the other thing that's, you, only thing that's really unique is one invoice line. So this is one meal order line. So the meal order ID, then uh, would, if, if it existed, would now be just an information field. And your key field would be customer and pizza date and time, as you had it originally. So you can either take this out or just move it down as a secondary field. So if I take it out, then I would make customer ID and pizza ID the keys. And, and, and pizza and the date and time in case they did it twice. So I would still have three if I removed meal order ID. Um, or just made well, it like You want date and time uh, separated, date and time under it. Because they can order the same pizza in the morning, same pizza in the afternoon, same pizza in the evening. And you need a re-entry for those. So just like the previous one, you need four key fields. Customer ID, pizza ID, date, and time. Now this, if you want to keep it, is just an information field. Mm. So some repair there too. So once again, you have to analyze the business before you design the database. You have to analyze the business, the business rules. Right. So or you get into undo and redo. Uh, you want to see my relationship? Uh, yeah, okay. It's going to be interesting given the situation we're in. Oh, yeah, this is right. Customer ID will be linked to customer ID. And there should be another table over there. And pizza ID is linked also. So those are great relationships. You have good relationships. Thank you, I You do. Uh, nothing more to be done there. Okay, and we kept it under six minutes. Jordan G, so you're in progress, and a little cleanup. Wait a minute, you already had those correctly. Go back to <laughs> relationships. Uh, you already have these, except this one just becomes an information field, right. and this gets broken into two. Okay, Jordan G. Yes, sir. You don't want to see my form? Oh, uh, I trust your form for okay. formal. They look pretty good, but I know. <laughs> I can't take my word. Oh, uh, sorry. Okay, show us the form. Oh, you want to? Oh, yeah, yeah, we want to see your form. No. I want to see my form. No, it's okay. Well, I think I crashed it. Jordan. Yeah, I'm sorry. They look good, though. We'll see you next time. Yeah, next okay. time. very quickly, Jordan. You really do. One guy's read, two people are talking. Oh, it doesn't take much. You might have to improve your hook up next. Hook up next time. Or else do it before class. Yeah, I have a
anybody that was less a serious student. Okay, we're good to go. Thank you. Okay, remind us of your project. Uh, my project is over uh, the chiropractor's office. So I have my customers, employees, and appointments that they'll be coming to. Hi. So I have the employee ID, which is the number I will put in, employee name, um, DOH is date of history when they started. Gender, I only got two options. And date of birth. And customers. Customer ID. Also, I put their number in. Uh, customer name, date of birth. If they have back problems, yes or no. And then no or female. ID, employee ID, both my keys. And I believe I should make the date and time my key as well. Yeah. And then. And now, what kind of entry do you make here? Is it a combination of dates and time? Great question. I don't believe so, actually. Oh, yeah. Well, no. is it dates? Time? No, it's just. That's late. Oh, it's a date time, but you're only entering dates. Yeah. So you do have to have two separate fields one for the well, date, one for the time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So having like a date and time, does it make it unique? Because yes, it, it does, but you can't put them into the same, the same time. In the Microsoft day. Access is bad because they call this a date time uh, type, but it's either a date or a time, yeah. not both. It let me put in both on, well, I have like the newest version, but it let me put in a date and time, that's why I made it. And I, you kept it that way? Uh, well, I just changed it. Yeah, I'm not sure that it will work. Well, if it works, fine, use it. Will that make it a unique key? If it's a unique yes, date yes, last time yes, because it yes, can't ever it be will. the same date and time? It will. Okay. So that makes the date and the time both keys. Okay, but what I, let's see. What I want to do is click on this data type. Click on data type. And date time, click on down. Um, date time, okay. Click on date time. Now let's see the thing, the formats that you can get. Click on format down here. Oh, let me format. And down arrow. And see, you can pick, uh, yeah, you, you can pick a general date and time, as okay. you're pointing out. You can do both at once. Okay. Good. Okay. Cool. So let's read the link. Successful, yes or no. Do they need prescription, yes or no. And follow up, yes or no. Okay, it's tight. It's tight. So you just have one more field to add to it. So please do that later. I want to see your relationship, sir. Sir. Close that out. Yeah, uh, nice right so yeah, see, mine went one to one, one, one. one. So I, that's why I was asking if I went from customer ID from the appointment section over. That's thanks. That's what happened. Oh, so click on this line. Left click. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, do a right click. Show change. Okay, do it, just delete the thing, we'll try to reestablish it. So click on the line, not the, click on the thin line. Delete. Okay, now draw it down again. Okay, now, the rest type one to many, it'll be one to many this time. Okay, so yeah. So I did go from the middle over. Okay, up and flying, looking good. No, we, we believe they're good. I mean, they're hard to make, take a lot of thought, I know. But <laughs> yeah. Some people actually put background pictures, background colors. You go to design, you can personalize it. Then we really want to see them. Bells and whistles. I totally have no idea. I know. No, I'm just X. Why are you fucking going to that? It's no, the, gear, the gear The gear next to your name. What? Yeah. Oh, wait, no, no. Come back after class, please. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir.
Now, my um, turn, and what I'm going to do is to go from simple queries to more complicated queries. Now, you said with the reports. Just a second, please don't talk my back. Let me get this done because I have trouble enough with one thing at a time. I'll get to it. Okay. Um, here's my query. Okay, yes, sir. Okay, so uh, earlier you had mentioned that using the report wizard is okay, but when you do a query, you want to do a query from the ground up. Yes, on your own. called design view. Okay, design view. Don't use the query wizard unless you like trouble. Okay. So this is the query that I have existing. And if I go to design view, then we can see how I designed it. What you do in the top of the query is you put the tables that you want to input to the query. Now, this one I kept very simple, and I just inputted one query, one table. And I chose a few tables. And now it's a, okay to print a report from this, because if I go to the report um, uh, report wizard, then uh, I can now see that I can uh, make a report from this query, which means the output of this query will be fed into a report, just like your other tables, because the output of this query is a table. So let's establish that again. So if I go to the query and run it, then the out, this is the output of the query. Is it not a table? Therefore, it's not, it, there, is it not eligible to be fed into a report? Okay. This table only has temporary existence. Uh, you cannot save it to my knowledge, and you can run it anytime you want by clicking on the query, which will produce the table as it is at that time. So now I'm going to create another query, and I'm going to use um, more complicated um, Tables. So now I'm going to um, bring in the students table, and I'm going to bring in the enrollments table, and I'm going to bring in the courses table. Now, as you see, the links come with them. They're already established. Too. So now I'm going to create my report, and I, what I want to do is um, create a um, list of courses for a student. I want to know a schedule for a student. So I'm going to drag down the student ID into this first slot. Okay. I'm going to draw down um, the student's last name from this table. Their first name, and that's all they re really care about. Now from this table, I'm going to take the course name. And then I'm going to take the professor's name, and I'm going to take the room. So you see how I've used that middle table to permit me to take fields from either one of the tables it links to. This is the power of the relational database. Now, if the grade has already been made, then I can also take the grade. Okay. So this is a query using three tables. Now I'm going to save this query, um, and I'm going to call it student schedule. Now I'm going to run this query, and so far I don't have any data. But if I did have data, I would have all of these fields. Now you see the beauty of the relational database is some of these fields came from one table, some came from another table, but they will all be put under the correct student because of those following the, through those links. So now I can go to reports, create a report, and a report wizard. And I can create a report from this um, student schedule. Can you guys drag the field over? Let's take them all over. Any grouping? No. Do I want to sort? So let's support sort on um, um, name, student's name. Okay, and next, and next, and student. 
students roster, student schedule. And finish. So now in my reports, I have this new report. And um, this is what it's going to look like. And once I get data in, and I don't enter data too soon, uh, then this report will be populated. It'll be a very nice report. Too. Now up in the top, you can put the date of this report or any other fields that you get to embellish it by, uh, by just going into the design view and modifying your report. But now, um, if I want to, um, now let's go back to, I want to run this report, student's uh, schedule. So when I run this report, it comes out at, like this. And um, what it did in the blink of an eye is it executed the query. This report is valid as of this moment. It ran the query, it took the output table, and it fed it into this report. That output table is now gone. So if you run it again, then the output table will be created again and fed into this report. So the query is what's producing this report. There's no permanent data producing this report. This report is coming off the query, using the query as input. You have tremendous um, flexibility with what you can do with queries. So let's go to student schedule and go to design view and look at some of the student schedule is a query. So I'm going to open a query and design view. Now, what I haven't said anything about yet are these criteria. These criteria, okay. Um, now, this is a student schedule. And um, now, um, this schedule will be printed, one page for each student, okay? One page for each student. However, suppose I only wanted to print the schedule for one student. Then here I would put, in the, in the criteria, I would put the student's name, such as Green. And now, instead of printing the report for all students, it would only print the report that had a student last name of Green, or this was ID number of 12434. So you can put selection criteria on the line of criteria, and you do not have to print all uh, output of the query, but only those that pass the criteria. For example, can you think of another criteria that you might want to um, put in here. Suppose that we wanted to only print this report for grades that were GPA, and now what does this mean? Um, now what am I going to get on this report? 3.6 and higher. 3.6 and higher, agreed? Because I restricted that criteria, okay? Now what am I going to... Um, Restriction am I going to enable now? Only classes, Only classes that, that belong to me, agree? Okay, good. Now, I don't have to do that, but I can also, now, here, room number. Uh, now, um, there are wild cards. Suppose I wanted to know all the rooms that were on the second floor. Well, that's a number, yeah, that's the texture. So what I can do is type a two and an asterisk. Now an asterisk means accept anything that follows. So this is two and asterisk, anything that starts with a two and ends with an asterisk. Okay. However, if I want to use that wild card, then I have to preface it with the word like. Okay. 
Now, what I've compiled for you is a list of operators that you can use to make your complicated queries with. Turn the page. And the first criteria, everybody okay? One more. Hmm. And we see how you could easily enter greater than 25, or you could be less than 50. Now, if you wanted to enter both greater than 25, now suppose I entered this criteria here. Greater than three point, this is a numeric field, or perhaps. Um, greater than 3.5 and less than 3.8. Then what students am I now going to select? Anything from 3.6 to 3.7? Yes, okay. Or I could put in equal sign as well. So you can get a range in there. Now, um, There is a standard um, field that comes with access, and it's called date with, um, with parentheses, and it means today's date. So you can get today's date in there anytime you want to. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Does a lot of this apply to like Excel, too? Like, will this kind of like... Like, yeah, coding, I guess? I don't recall any operations in Excel. I don't think you can use criteria. If you can use a criteria in Excel, I bet it would. But like, I haven't come across the ability to use criteria in Excel. Like filters. Case. You can use filters in Excel, right? If you, that, like if you do the date with the parentheses, it will always have the current date. Yes, okay, that carries Stuff over. Like that? Okay. Yes, it's the same company, so there's a lot of carryover. Okay, now... Um, Here you have the field ability to you called date difference. Number of years between the person's birth date and today's date is greater than 30. So here you're going to do date difference. And then why, 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 meaning you're going to focus on the year part of the date field. And then comma, birth date, the year part of the birth date field. And you're going to compare that to date, and then you have to close parentheses for the function date difference, and it has to be greater than 30. The next one is um, you can only, you're going to pick out the records that don't have an entry in this. This is good for editing. You can show all the records that don't have a student name. Something got lost, you read? This null, exception reporting. You can get the very complicated one. In the next page, city equals Chicago. And birth date less than date add. And I'm not sure what date add. It's a, um, it's a, um, should be a field in one of the tables. Okay, so we know city equals Chicago. And date add year minus 40 to today's date. Oh, you add, you subtract 40 from today's date. Okay. I'm not sure what the date add does. It's not important because I don't think you're going to use it. But what is important is the following. Um, 
Now, um, here I'm going to type uh, the last name that I want, and I want green. And on the next line, I'm going to type um, Smith. So now, um, this will pick out what records? What records will this now pick out? Green and Smith. No. Nope. It will pick out all of Green's records that has Tom for a professor oh. and fit this grade point average, agree? Mm -hmm. But is there any restriction on Smith's records? No. 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 So it will pick out all of Smith, agree? It will pick out all of Smith. Now if I put or Smith up here, instead of the same line, then these restrictions would also apply to Smith. Would it be or? Or and? Or. Like really no, or, because there is no student who is both named Smith and Green. Oh, okay, gotcha. <clears throat> can you do that for multiple, not just two? Like, can you go Green? Okay, well, I'm going Smith down. Or, 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 or there's okay. more lines down there. Use as many as you want. Okay. Um, so, we have two types of logic. And logic or logic. So, this is the way these two types of logic enter in. This will print the records that have a last name of Green and a professor of Tom and a GPA in this. So the word and applies to the same line. Or it will print the records for Smith and any criteria that belong to Smith. So and logic applies to entries on the same line or logic applies to entries on a new line, and or. Um, now, you can use these um, approximate matches. So if we turn the page once more, we find exactly matched China. So smile if you find exactly matched China, okay? So if you type in China in parentheses, it has to exactly match it, too. Did everyone find that? Yeah. Okay, now continuing. Not Mexico. I want everything except Mexico. Not Mexico. So I want all the records that are not Mexico. What about the next one? Like you with a asterisk. Anything after the letter U. Anything that starts with capital U, agree? That's what like means. What about not like you with a capital asterisk? Nothing else. it has. Right. Okay, now what about like, and this quote marks, uh, asterisk, Korea, asterisk? Any Korea. Anything that has Korea anywhere in the word. Anything can come before. So the asterisk stands for a wild card phrase. It can be any length at all, agree? Wild card. Now a question mark stands for a wild card of one character. We we'll turn the page, we should find some question marks. Or down the road, we will find question marks. We won't worry about them now. So we turn the page once, and we find not like. So we want, what would this one print now? Not like, quote, wild card career. Anything without Korea. Any, anything that doesn't have Korea somewhere in the word, agree? Somewhere in the word. What about like wildcard INA? Would it print China and Argentina? Yeah. It would find those. What about not like anything no? And ill no is self-explanatory. Is not no self-explanatory, okay? Now, um, contains zero length fields, just a blank pair of quotes. Not zero length fields is um, um, anything that has any entry at all. Yes, sir. Difference between a zero length and a null. You can set the field to a blank value. That's a permissible entry. A null means you didn't make an entry. 
<coughs> a blank means you deliberately set it to a blank. It's, a, it's intentional. Filled out blank. Yes. Now we get into some more interesting ones. Next, greater or equal to Mexico. Now we have a range of values like, quote, bracket, A dash D, bracket. So all the letters A through D have been recognized. Okay. So USA, are you key? Now we can give them a list. In the following list, France, China, Germany, Japan, anyone in that list. So you can list four at once. Uh, now you can have turning the page, and we can have pick up countries where the last letter is a Y, pick up countries where the length of characters is a greater than 10, or pick up what does it mean, quote mark, C-H-I, question mark, question mark, quote mark. What would that mean, Gordon, Jordan, H? Do you find that entry? Yeah. Um, the, the, qu the question mark is a one character wild card. Oh, okay. Question mark is a one character wild card. So anything that is five letters long that starts with CHI. Got it. So you can get quite involved. <coughs> now we go to numeric fields, and you don't need quote marks. They're just numbers. Too. So you put in 100, or not 1,000. Or you can put in greater or equal. Of course, these only apply to numeric fields. And other such entries for numeric fields. You can even do a list. Okay. Now, the uh, pound sign is used for dates. You uh, surround date values now I'm on page 16. These page numbers are in the lower right. Page 16. If you put quote marks on it, I mean pound signs on it, also known as hash marks, then you're talking about date values. Hashtag, so. Copy. So you need to, to turn pages and you can see how you can work with date values. Greater than, less than, not. And ranges of dates. And date part, just part of a date. We certainly won't go between that complications. And more difficult dates. These will be used in a real life business if you make that transition. And then you get dates between, between dates. So on page 21, the second from the bottom, we want to contain a date that fell in the last 30 days. So let's analyze this. Between date parentheses, what does that do? Today's date, agree? Yes. And date, add minus one to the month. To the in field, add minus one to today's date, right? And that's the last month. So this is between this month and last month. Date add. Okay. So this is what I mean by complex criteria, complex um, queries. I want you to of your three queries, one can be simple, getting warmed up, but I want to have at least two complicated queries. In other words, I want to have some and logic and or logic. Now I'm going to show you the neatest thing of all. Now suppose that I wanted to pick out a certain student, but I didn't know at this time because I'm the programmer, what that student's name's going to be, but the staff member in the office 
a student comes in and says, show me my roster. So you don't know what name you need in this report until runtime, agreed? So how can you defer your criteria to runtime when the staff member actually runs the query? In the following way. Instead of green, well first I'm going to take out Smith because it complicates it unnecessarily. Instead of green, I'm just going to type an equal sign and a box. Okay? Now let's see what happens when we run this query. We get a prompt box. Get a prompt box. What did you want to go in between that bracket? What did you want to go in between that bracket? So now if you type in green, then at runtime, it's just as if you had typed in green in the query design. But you don't want to do that because you're going to leave town. Staff operator doesn't want to, doesn't know what student's going to come in, agree? So you could put prompt boxes in all of these. Instead of fixing the GPA, you can put in a prompt box and fix it at runtime. So these prompt boxes permit you to delay the assignment of your criteria until runtime. Now, in these box, you can also put in all of the uh, freedoms that we have in the criteria themselves. You can put in like, greater than, and wild cards. So suppose I put in um, G and an asterisk. Then what report would I generate? Three. Anything after G. Anything that started with G, agreed? Okay. Now suppose I put, so now let's cancel it. Now suppose here um, I put in professors, suppose here I put in a prompt box with an equal sign and two brackets, and now I run it, and now we can enter the parameter value. Now if, in this, I can I do even better than that. In this prompt box, I can put a prompt message. says, enter professor's name. <laughs> um, is it the other brackets? It went somewhere. <laughs> it's, no, okay. it's asking that one first. Sorry? The last name of the students first. Maybe it's asking Oh, that yeah, first. okay, thank you. So let's put in DD and go to the next one. And as promised, yeah. uh, you'll get that prompt message. Thank you. Why didn't you do that? Okay, good. So you embellish all of your criteria with prompt boxes as you care to. So you can put in criteria at runtime instead of design time. The people in the office like it a lot better than you really do. So I'm going to require that you put in several prompt boxes someplace in the criteria. So what we've done is we've taken you from very simple criteria and queries that you had last time to now the ability to do complicated criteria. And so that's what we expected that at least one of your queries due Wednesday will be complicated. The last one due Monday will be complicated, and on Monday you'll also do uh, Ayano's suggestion of a switchboard. <laughs> okay, we're done. Is that equal sign or Ten questions for No, 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 no. Awesome.
You did write the math, didn't you? Never mind. I did for 13. Well, we didn't. We didn't need 10. Uh, uh, Run for nice. Run for nice. Yeah. It's not going to be me. How can I say? On the edge. Good night. Thank Good you. night. Thank you, sir. You made some great contributions. And one more time, you say, my arm. That's fine. Now, if I can figure it out on my own, I'll be in business. Uh, Microsoft Access has excellent help. Just click on the help. It's really good. Have a good night. You too.